Welcome to Untold Stories. Thank you. What do you think about our fairy tale atmosphere? <laughs> it is very creative, very cool. I said it, you know, it's, uh, I, w I was wondering who did it and you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, we are here to try to find out Untold Stories. We, we basically, we are trying to find more about you. There are millions of people who think they know who you are or what you do. We are more into trying to find out why you are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's try to start by why, why this type of, of music? Uh, this type, I mean, I started very young. At, uh, I started recording and writing for my first album when I was 15. So my development happened in the eyes of the public and I'm still developing so it was for me it was always about finding myself stylistically and trying to create a style that I love you know but also a style that represents me and that's authentic so I couldn't just do um, you know something that's just like I don't know Jamaican reggae or, or hip-hop or whatever I just had to kind of make it a uh, mix because that's who I am. I'm, I'm also mixed culturally and I basically pick the best in all the cultures that I'm exposed to and I try to make it into like a best of culture, you know. And I believe that, that this culture is the future for everyone because we mix more and more and eventually everyone will be mixed. Talking about multiculturality, you're, you're a mix yourself from your family yeah. and your music reflects this, uh, this approach. How mm. do you think this helps you become a better person or better musician? What is multiculturality to you? Um, it is, I, I mean, first of all, I believe that there's no such thing as a pure race anyway. It's like, it's a, uh, we've always mixed, you know, and um, it just so happened that that, now, that that there's a you know a multitude of people that look one way in a certain place and differently in others. But it, we or even those people were mixed once, um, and um, I don't know how. It, it's just who I am, so I'm just trying to you know keep it real basically and not do something. Mm, that has been done, but rather make it my, give it my own thing. It, I'm not sure how it helps me to be a better person. I'm just uh, trying to express what I feel is right, you know. But personally, how do you think uh, it affects you? It improved you? Well, I mean, I can see things from different perspectives, you know. Like I, I can see things from a European perspective. I can see things from an African perspective. But not just uh, because I learned it, but because I lived lived it. You know, um, I'm always different wherever I am. You know, um, in uh, Europe, you know, I would be different from everyone else. In Africa, I'm, I'm different from everyone else. So it's just who I am. So in music, I'm different from everyone else. <laughs> and if people are trying to put it in a box, you know, then we need to create a new box because. Um, it's not as black and white as it used to be. Yeah. Music generally, you know, it's, it's the, the, the genres are not as simple as they used to be. Would you describe yourself as a perfectionist? Mm. In a way, but I also know when to let go. Because a lot of per perfectionists, they keep uh, perfecting things. And then b by perfecting them, the thing or the, the music loses its soul. It lo loses um, this very immediate first impulse that it once had. And it's very dangerous when the, when this musician has too much control over his music, you know. Very often we make our, our music worse <laughs> than it was. So it's a mix of accepting the imperfection of like a first take, a first uh, thing that you did and trying to find the beauty in that imperfection and being like, I'm okay with that, you know, and letting go. And next time, when I, when I have another idea, I will then maybe try to do a better job if I can, but I will not um, keep going, keep going, and 
until I feel it's perfect. No, I will, I will give it one shot and, uh, you know, hopefully um, whatever I didn't like about the last time, I, I will improve this time. But it's, it's, it's never perfect and that's what keeps you going, you know. You always think, I always think I can do better. So you're constantly evolving, no? It's not mm. like you're waiting in a hole until you think you're ready for the world and then you come out and try to yeah. know, show your art. No, I'm, I'm constantly evolving. I've, I have, uh, I always have ideas and I work uh, for myself and others, you know, I write and produce and do all these things. So I'm, I'm always, I'm actually working too much. <laughs> so I have to actually stop myself from doing how, things. How do you balance the amount of concerts that a uh, known artist has with the desire to, to get a perfect result or to deliver something special well it's it's a process the good thing about doing a lot of concerts is you you and your band become very good at some point <laughs> you know the bad thing is it can become a routine and then it loses its you know the soul of it and so I try to keep everyone on their toes change set lists all the time put in new stuff do a lot of improvisation kind of create a framework that's sure, but within that, you know, there's always things that can happen. I allow... Uh, but to you, what keeps motivates you from playing the songs and try to live them mm. every time when you play them? Mm. So, because, okay, you are motivating the people around you, but mm. to motivate yourself when you're playing a song for the... Yeah, I always think I, always think I can play it maybe better or differently, and I always enjoy seeing people, you know, inspired by it, you know, to be to dance, to, you know, I like obviously to, um, to have that kind of communication in concerts with people and people to go wild and, you know, I like that energy and even if a song, if I've played it a million times, I, I always uh, I like the effect it has on people, you know. It, the song lives differently every time when you play it? Yeah, 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 yeah. it does. You know, I mean, and when, when it doesn't, it will change something, you know. How, how hard is to relate with people from different cultures, different countries, different languages, and still be able to uh, transmit your message? I don't find that hard at all because, again, I'm, I am built that way. I'm built to communicate. I've always, my life was, has always been very... I spread like I was you know I was at a boarding school that was very elite at home I was with very tough guys <laughs> you know I was so I had these different worlds you know and then obviously culturally there was these different worlds and I always tried to create a language that um, that allows me to speak to everyone without having to change without having to be this way here and that way there I didn't want to do that so you know, when I now travel and do concerts, it's a bit the same thing. I, I, I find it very easy to relate to people and to transmit my message. Um, and people seem to get it and respond. And many people ask me, you know, like, okay, how do you do it or whatever? And I'm like, it's not something I do. It's just, this is the way I am. So, so. do you play music to feel? or to forget, to escape reality, or music is its own reality? Um, I'm not really trying to escape, I'm more doing it because it's fun, you know? It's fun and I believe that it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for people, it's good for me. It's a, it's a good thing, you know, you know, like many people, we have to, sometimes we have to do jobs that are not necessarily good for anyone in particular, but we have to do it to, to earn our living. I feel very blessed that I can do something that's not bad for anyone, you know, and something that makes me happy and makes other people happy and, um, and be okay in life. How complicated is your life with all this touring? Uh, how did your personal relations changed during time. How your mm. friendships have been affected by being away so much? 
I'm very close with my family. You know, they're good friends of mine. And um, <coughs> I have, uh, yeah, I have some very good friends. Um, it, it does change because people evolve up at a different rate, you know? When you're constantly, it's like you're in a time machine when you're in a nightliner, in a tour bus, you know? You wake up, you're in the next town. You wake up, you're in the next town. Sometimes you don't even know the name, you know? And um, so when you get back home, it's like your whole system is running at a different pace. So you're just like, uh, you, you, you know, and then you meet people and they're still doing exactly the same thing, you know? Um, sometimes it does not, if, if you don't grow at the same rate, it can, can be a problem, but if, if at the same time, when the people are cool people and real, it doesn't really matter what they do, it's just if you can relate to them in a real way, then nothing changes really. What is the first memory uh, that comes to your mind when you say friendship, for example? <laughs> my, my childhood friend, I would say, like from way back. Yeah, it's like uh, one guy, I was my friend. Tell <laughs> us a bit. Huh? Oh, You met thousands oh. of people and still you can relate with one yeah, when you think of it. It's him. funny, yeah, yeah, he was my best friend. Um, and he was... Uh, he, you know, I was very, I was kind of a uh, very physical, you know. I like to fight and stuff. So, <laughs> so um, he was not so physical. So I was always like his protector and stuff. And uh, I was always like, no, he's cool. Come on, let him play with everyone. And, and then, and we play. We started guitar together, DJing, you know, scratching and stuff. We we experimented many things, graffiti. We did all these things. We started together and. You know, today he's like a DJ of, uh, and producer, very good producer actually, of, of quite a cool um, hip hop group from Germany. But we're not really in touch anymore. But um, he's the first that comes to mind. He was from my small village, and we were like, I don't know, five, six, you know. So let's stick to when you were five or six. Yeah. What do you think shaped you as a man and as an artist? Who are your heroes? Real heroes or imaginary? Well, my, my heroes were, I mean, at the time, I was really into He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. And uh, I was into uh, <laughs> Kung Fu movies like crazy. I loved old Chucky Chan films, man. Like, I really liked the old ones, you know. Did you meet Chuck e. Chan? No, never, never. <laughs> and Jet Li also, the old, but old, old ones, you know, where, you can, where they fly like crazy and you can actually still see the rope, you know? <laughs> yeah. No. About talking about imperfection. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. You're saying that. No, I love the story. It was like, like how in, in music you have the blues um, system where it's always the same chords and then, you know, the Kung Fu movies all, also always had the same storyline. I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, and uh, my, my heroes, I guess, well, I mean, my father, in a way, because I was in, in, a, in a very German village. I grew up there and very Catholic. And our house was like an oasis. My father was a writer and he collected art and stuff. So uh, in my house, it was like African sculptures everywhere, um, paintings, writings, you know. So it was kind of, a, you know, just being surrounded with that really shaped me and just be, uh, my father's spirit and his, his views really, really shaped me in a, in a big way. Um, and then when I started music, I was obsessed with Bob Marley, basically, because my father died at some point. So I, I, um, I then really um, substituted my father with Bob Marley. I was really like, you know, I was in a boarding school you know, right after that happened. And so I was not even with my mom or my father, I was kind of alone. It was like 11 and then, so I, I uh, you know, I really uh, went deep into, into Bob Marley's music and um, I really idealized him. Um, 
What is a hit to you? Does it matter if people, I don't know, buy the record or it's it's a huge hit? What, what is a hit to you? Yeah, well, it does matter because it, people, uh, su our success gives you f the freedom to do something, you know, in, in this system at least. So, um, a hit to me is something that truly connects with the people, without marketing, without um, big, um, a big machine pushing it, you know. Like for me, there is those hits that are really uh, engineered and fabricated and there's true hits that just are, that are just masterpieces and people just feel them, they just hit them, you know, in, in, in the right place. And um, yeah, that, that is a true hit for me. Do you feel? Uh, when you are writing a song, do you feel the potential or do you feel that this is going to be a hit or not? Yeah. I've heard many artists saying that they were expecting certain songs to be a hit and they didn't and the other way around. Yeah, well, I, I usually know. I usually know. <laughs> I usually know. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I produce other artists as well, so the reason for that is because I usually know. Like if an artist is going to be big even or I just can feel it. If some, it's like a hit or like say an artist that is special and that will be big, they have a secret, you know? They have their own secret, which is like you can see it in them and you can, uh, it's like they have their own channel to, to something that they believe in, you know? And that's very exclusive. How so hard is to access that challenge? Uh, you can, you can. Basically what I do is I look at them looking at it. So I look at them and they're looking at them. So I'm trying to look at where are they looking? Okay, what are they seeing? And then, when then by their conviction and how strongly they believe in, 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 in their vision, that's how I see, yes, this person will get there. It's more, mainly the conviction. You see that conviction in, in, in an artist, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How would you like to touch people, influence people through your music. What would you like the people to see in your music? Well, I would like to just be an example for something, you know, um, else, like something different and my, um, an alternative to, you know, what you see in the mainstream and, and like, uh, um, I would like, I would like to inspire a change, you know. I would like to, you know, mm, change certain things. Have you encountered situation when you felt that you made made a difference in someone's life through your music? Yes, I mean, you know, individual lives. Yes, you know, definitely. Um, I mean, yes, there's. I mean, there's there's things like you know, people. Uh, being very sick and the, the music meaning a lot to them and helping them through uh, difficult phases or stages in their lives and you know I've, uh, things like that and I feel privileged because it's not I feel privileged that you know that that it means something to them on that level because it's not something um, yeah it's, you know because that's when life is really real when you're almost when you're at the brink of death and you make it real decisions like, okay, this means something, this really means something to me, or this I don't need right now. So it means a lot, you know? Um, yeah, but I mean, what I would like to inspire is fundamental change. I can't, I can't do it myself. You know, I'm aware of that, that, but I mean, you know, bring artists together kind of, and, uh, you know, move in, in one direction and trying to yeah, change things, you know, like music is so, how you say, um, so much inflation in the music because everything is so fast right now. Um, and I would like to change that, for example, I would like to change the power structures of the world. <laughs> how much of Bob Marley is, is in this approach? A lot, but there's many people that, that, that thought that way, you know? Because it's true, I, I gravitate towards Bob Marley or people like Fela Kuti that have a message simply because they have a message, you know, that, that uh, speaks to me that I believe in, and uh, yeah, I, I really believe that the whole the system needs to change. You know, 
and um, and I really believe in the power of the people. I think the people are not aware of how much uh, power they have. Let's talk about how you see life. Do you see life in milestones, in moments? How do you create memories? How do you live in a moment and create a lasting memory? Um, see, the thing is, I'm really in the now, yeah? Is it, I, I really just... I wouldn't know what I'm doing tomorrow, yeah. So, I it just so happens that certain things stand out. <laughs> I don't create them. It's just uh, certain things. My memory is very selective. I might remember something that's very small and not remember something that's very big. Um, I try to make things mean something. Try. I try to. This also in songwriting is the same thing. If you feel like an idea is bigger than just the moment, but it, an idea that points to another reality, a bigger reality or whatever, but just beyond itself, you know, okay, cool, there's a, a timeless aspect, there's a universal aspect about this idea. Let's work on this, let's, let's preserve this idea, let's make it into a song or something, a uh, piece, art piece, whatever. That's how, how you know, because certain things you just feel that there's, they have like inter eternity in them. Say, you know. Romanians are pretty, I don't know, introverted and we are finding hard to enjoy moments, to identify precious moments. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them based on your experiences and uh, to enjoy music, enjoy different culture, enjoy life basically? If you would, I don't know, write a guide Okay. The Romanian spectator <laughs> to enjoy like the I, moment. I don't have all the answers. Uh, uh, I just, I guess, um, me too, I'm like that. It's not like I go to a club and I'm like, yeah, and I'm the, the center of the party. Not at all. It's that's only stage. When I'm off stage, I'm like Romanians. <laughs> so, I, like, um, I just feel like I can really enjoy myself when I really like something. Like when I really like the music, when I really somehow... So I guess, you know, you just have to have very good parties, <laughs> good concerts. And, you know, someone, a, good, a singer that does a good job at, at connecting with the people, it will make it quite easy for, for, for the people to enjoy themselves, you know. Um, so expose yourself to good things, you know, as much as you can. They're everywhere around us, you know, sometimes we, we don't take note of them. For example, when I, when I started doing the, the Sunrise gigs, you know, playing at Sunrise, it was just an idea, I never, but then when I did it, I realized, man, I never look at sunrises. You know, I never see this. I always sleep, <laughs> you know? So, and these moments were incredible moments, you know? And uh, stuff like that, it's around us all the time, but we just don't make the effort to, to, to see it or expose ourselves to it, you know. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all this with us. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>